Bon de la Je ne vais, vais pas le présenter, je ne vais pas vous présenter sa filmographie euh, parce que j'ai l'impression qu'ici tout le monde la connaît. Euh, Nicolas vient ici euh, pour nous présenter euh, un objet, un livre, un book, 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 euh, qui s'appelle L'art du regard et euh, qui rassemble euh, sa, sa, bah, sa, sa collection personnelle d'affiches de, de, de films. So Nicolas, maybe you could tell us about this heavy thing. I hardly, yes, it's difficult to hold. Oh, All right, uh, yes. Um, 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 are you going to translate or does everyone yeah. understand English? No, I'm, I'm going to translate and okay, we're going to switch my. This, oh, this okay. one is mobile. All right. Um, well, I, um, I, um, I, I like to collect things. Il aime collecter. And <laughs> so about five years ago, um, a friend of mine, a writer, who used to work on Times Square in New York, which was called the Deuce, which was the famous area for extreme cinema, whether it was pornography or violence or anything obscure coming out of Europe. Yeah, cinq années là, un ami à lui de New York qui aime les, les endroits un peu. On va dire un terme de quoi, voilà, de, 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 de New York. C'est un Alan Jones. C'est Jimmy. Et mon frère était appelé Jimmy McDonough, qui um, used to work in the 70s and 80s on Times Square. Uh, and he was one of the creators of the first fanzine about exploitation, which was called Sleesaw Express. Voilà, c'était euh, son ami qui s'appelle Jimmy McDonough. Jimmy McDonough is an American writer who has done a lot of biographies, amongst them Ross Meyer, Andy Milligan, Tammy Wyatt, uh, Neil Young. And he's a very good American writer. Donc il a fait une fanzine, mais c'est aussi un, un écrivain. C'est un écrivain euh, américain, euh, célèbre. Um, well, five years ago, he asked if I wanted to buy his poster collection, and my reaction was not really. But after a long time, he convinced me to do it, and. Um, So I paid him $10,000 because I knew he needed the money. And about eight weeks later, a thousand posters arrived at my house. Donc, il m'a proposé sa collection d'affiches. Au départ, j'ai refusé parce que j'en avais, je, voilà, avais pas envie. Il a fini par me convaincre. Et euh, il m'a demandé 10 000, 10 000 dollars. Euh, et j'ai acheté cette collection. And um, not really knowing what to do with all this uh, because it takes a lot of space. And I'm married to a feminist, so when she saw <laughs> that all the posters were of half naked women being whipped, she got very, very angry. Donc voilà, tous ces posters, ça prend énormément de place, d'autant plus que je suis marié à une femme qui est très féministe. Et voir des posters avec des femmes qui se font fouetter, tout ça, bon, elle ne comprenait pas très bien. So. Um, I was basically going to take all the posters and put it in the basement and throw away the key. But as I was going through, actually, uh, Ryan Gosling was in Copenhagen visiting us, and we were going through all the boxes together. And uh, there were some incredible campaigns for films that I've never heard of. And we later on found out that they didn't exist anymore as films either. I decided that instead of just putting in the basement, I wanted to make a poster book, like a, uh, because all these films were like a time machine into an era that doesn't exist anymore that we write a lot about, and but we know very little about because there are very few artifacts from that era because most of it's gone because most of the films are gone. Donc il s'agissait d'affiches de films très, très rares dont certains films avaient totalement euh, disparu, quoi, dont, 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 dont on ne connaissait pas l'existence presque. 
But um, so I went to a British publisher and I said, I want to make the most expensive poster book ever produced. Je suis allé chez un éditeur anglais. Je lui ai dit, je veux faire le plus le le livre de poster de film le plus le plus cher qui soit. And um, you know, and he was like, what was going to be in the poster book because. You know, and I said, uh, well, the idea was I wanted to make the most expensive poster book ever made, and it was going to be with posters from films no one's ever heard of. And he said, well, uh, it will cost you $100,000. And I said, what will I get? And he said, you'll get 4,000 copies. And I ended up doing 2,500 in English and 1,000 in French. But it would cost me $100,000 to produce the book. So in exchange, I would have 4,000 copies dispatched between France and Angleterre and the United States. And so in exchange, I would have 100,000 dollars. And so I said, OK. I'll pay for it, but I didn't have the money, so while they were making the book, I was able to go to Texas and shoot a, a car commercial for Lincoln with Matthew McConaughey, and the money that I made on that car commercial, I used basically to finance the book. So he didn't have the money, and he was in train of publicity in Texas with Matthew McConaughey, Et donc l'argent qu'il a gagné pour faire cette pub a servi pour, pour payer, pour payer ce, ce, ce jeu. So hence, you're missing, you're missing. Yes, and um, my wife doesn't know how much money I've spent on the book yet. So please don't tweet, please don't tweet anything as of now. I don't tell her. Donc sa femme ne sait pas le montant d'argent qu'il a, qui, voilà, qu'il a dépensé pour ce, ce, ce livre. Donc ne doutez pas. C'est cette information. Euh, ne pas qu'elle apprenne. Well, it wasn't so much what I liked and liked. I just had this vast amount of posters around me. So I just basically went through it to see what I thought could be interesting to <coughs> put in a book. I was even able to find what they would call illegal posters. Back in the 60s, for example, when projectionists would sell prints illegally to each other, they, couldn't, they would have to make their own posters for the films that they were being screened illegally. And I was able to find a few hand-painted posters from the 60s of films like Repulsion and, and there's one of Hammer Horror Movie and so forth. And they were quite unique because they hadn't seen the daylight for like 50 years. Oui, ce n'était pas tant la question de savoir si je mettais des que j'aimais ou que j'aimais pas. C'était une collection, donc c'est vraiment l'ensemble de cette collection qui représentait avec des choses très très rares, des, 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 des affiches qui sont peintes, qui sont, faites à, euh, voilà, qui sont, peintes, qui sont dessinées. Et euh, c'était vraiment la rareté. Euh, de, voilà. Je pense que Nicolas est un collectionneur avant tout. Voilà. Hi, um, I heard that you shot your next film in uh, 60 frames per second, and I wanted to know if uh, it was true and why, and if you already had a cut for it. Thank you. Donc, sur le prochain film euh, qui a été tourné en, en, en 60, images, 60 images secondes, donc est-ce que voilà. Yeah, well, this is why I love the internet, because <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> but someone did show me that a, a, a picture of the clapboard where it said 68 frames per second had kind of been leaked on the internet. It just because I did a scene in slow motion. That was all it was, but now it became this big thing that I shot a movie and whatever. 20,000k. <laughs> it, it's just, uh, but I love the myth, you know. Donc il adore cette cette rumeur, ce mythe, mais non, non, voilà. But the movie is almost done. It'll be ready next year. What's the title? What's the title? Uh, the Neon Demon. The Neon Demon. And it's only with women and Keanu Reeves. Donc un film avec seulement des femmes et et Keanu Reeves. Hi, uh, I was wondering, uh, we heard a lot about it, but in France, uh, we didn't have the possibilities to see uh, your wife's documentary about the Milot Forbid, so uh, do you think one day it will be able to come out in France? Uh, 
Uh, well, the distributor is standing right over there. So just. <laughs> Donc on n'a pas vu de documentaire qui a été tourné par sa femme sur, sur un livre de produits, parce que ça avait été édité, et donc Nicolas euh, euh, nous envoyait au distributeur, à un distributeur qui est juste là derrière, qui se cache. Donc il ne sache pas manuel, il juste que c'est bientôt. C'est bientôt. Je pense que 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 c'est bientôt. Uh, you saw the Christian massacre, it was a shock for you. Yeah. It's, early, it's early to say. Il a vu massacre à Tronçonneuse à 14 ans, et c'est ce qu'il a un peu. Uh, voilà, ça l'a marqué. Pour faire du cinéma, at this moment, he decided that you wanted to do it. Well, it was the first time that saw art was, you know, filmmaking was an art form. So, up until then, you know, I grew up with parents who thought the French new wave was like the greatest thing ever made and I thought it was shit <laughs> and uh, so when I saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that to me is when I saw film as an art form but it was probably because it was the only way to make my mother really angry <laughs> and then he had a massacre when he was 14 years old and in fact his parents were fans of the new wave of French so when he saw this film he said that this is a form of art this is really cinema is a form of art Il se rend compte rétrospectivement que c'est peut-être possible pour embêter sa mère et pour euh, voilà. Une autre question. Hi. Uh, actually, it's not a question. I just want to tell you that when I was 14, I saw Drive at Sierra. Uh, that was my first shock. And so uh, now, thanks to you, I'm working in the movie industry. And that's thanks to you. Just want to say that. Thank you. Great right, man. I'm glad. <laughs> just keep doing it. I, uh, I was wondering uh, uh, what was the process to make a different, different form of art if, if you worked as uh, you do with your movies or if you were thinking about something else with the, the creation of the book? Uh, well, the book was more, um, it was a great joy to have all these images, but also everything in the book is very fetishized because all. All, most of the films were before pornography, so all these campaigns in the posters promise to see the most forbidden flesh you will ever see, but they will never show it because everything was censored. But the idea that you would potentially see it, I found very interesting because it really shows that filmmaking is really about subliminal, that cinema is not about what you see, it's about what you don't see. And then I just thought some of the posters were so outrageously crazy and beautiful and exotic and weird and strange that if I didn't document in history, most likely they would just be forgotten. Oui, ce qui était intéressant pour lui de, de, dans, la, dans la collection de ces affiches-là, c'était comment... Euh, parce que la plupart des films étaient censurés, donc on ne voyait pas euh, les, les, les scènes de sexe, mais toute l'affiche euh, dans ce qu'elle disait, disait bien plus, bah, faisait appel à nos fantasmes. Et pour lui, c'est vraiment euh, bah, ce qui est très intéressant dans le, dans, dans le cinéma. C'est tout ce qu'on ne voit pas, c'est tout, toute cette activité-là qui fait que tout ce qu'on attend, mais tout ce, qu tout ce qui n'est pas forcément montré. Donc c'était pour ça que c'était important de, de, de garder une trace de ces affiches, euh, parce que ça, ces affiches allaient être oubliées. C'est une partie de l'histoire du cinéma qui allait être totalement, euh, totalement oubliée. Alors, deux questions, est-ce qu'il a envie de réaliser un film de sexploitation et est-ce qu'il a un, un contrôle sur les, les affiches de ses propres films Well, I don't know, I, most of the films I've made lately are very sexploitation oriented, I mean, um, so, uh, especially Drive and All the God Forgives, which are very fetishized, um, and regarding work, uh, you work with individual distributors on what kind of campaign is right for your film in what territory. So you have to involve yourself, but you also have to respect their talent of how to sell a movie. So there's always a fine line. Uh, lui, il a l'impression de faire des films de exploitation quand il fait uh, Drive ou Only God Forgives. Pour lui, il est dans la fétichisation, dans, 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 dans ce domaine-là. Uh, uh, après, je... Les posters, les posters, les posters, pour les jeux, j'ai un... 
Voilà, donc il laisse le distributeur le travail. Non, non, il laisse le distributeur faire son travail. Voilà. Um, I saw love on Casper's couch <laughs> with, ga with, with 3D glass and Casper looking at me watching the film. Uh, so I thought it was great. Donc la question c'est savoir s'il a eu l'homme de Gaspard Noé et lui il a dit oui qu'il a eu l'homme sur Gaspard Noé sur le canapé de Gaspard avec Gaspard le regardant regarder l'homme donc euh, oui oui bien bien do you like it? Oh, I thought it was terrific yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean I admire anyone that has such a a a, a specific point of view that they are relentless in what they do I think I, I admire that more than anything else non, il aime beaucoup les personnes, les artistes qui ont, un, qui ont leur point, point de vue, qui ont quelque chose de, de très personnel. Ça, ça, ça me touche beaucoup. Maybe the last thing, uh, if you uh, can tell us few things about Kenneth Hanger. Ce n'est pas parce qu'on édite le DVD, mais c'est aussi parce qu'on édite le DVD, parce que c'est un grand éditeur. Well, Kenneth Hanger, you can kind of just say, was... If it wasn't for Kenneth Anger, there would be no, none of us left really, because he very much created modern pop cinema, especially the whole kind of modern advertising that I also do myself when I do commercials. The, the idea of fetishized images of erotic notions, but that has a combination of pop music. And he was the first one to use pop music with images and so forth. So uh, if you haven't seen him, I highly recommend um, Uh, seeing his work because uh, it, it, it's a great way to understand how cinema has evolved in the last 50 years. Ouais, si, si, si Kenneth Hanger n'avait pas existé, on ne serait pas ben, des réalisateurs de, de, comme, comme moi ne seraient pas là parce que ça a été le premier, un des premiers euh, réalisateurs pop modernes euh, qui, 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 euh, qui mettait en avant la fétichisation, ben, c est, c est, cet érotisme et cette, ben, sur des musiques pop, ben, tout, ben, tout le travail que qui est fabuleux de Kenneth Hanger et que je vous conseille. Voilà. On va remercier Nicolas. Euh, Wow, where did you get this? Did you make it? Yes. You made this? Yes. Oh, wow. Nobody has the same in the entire world. This is the one of a kind. Yes. That's pretty groovy, actually. Wow. There you go. I'm just going to go. Non, non, je t'ai pris dans l'emballage, hein, quand tu... Ah, non, non, non. Ouais. So, um, what's your name Jacques. Uh, nice one. Jacques. Mac or Jacques. Jacques. Oh, Jacques. 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 Okay. Jacques.